Hello everyone and welcome to ECS 30, Programming and Problem Solving in C. In this video, we're going to get you set up so that you're able to start programming. We're going to talk about how to install the tools that you need to program at home, how to get access to them through Mimir if you are taking this class, how to and then how to install an IDE to help make your programming a lot easier. In order to be able to program, you're going to need two different tools. The first is an editor which is a simple program that lets you write text. One editor that you've probably been using all your life is Microsoft Word. And while you could write programs in Microsoft Word, there are many other editors that are a bit more specialized for writing programs in and will make it easier. Some examples of these are Sublime, Emacs, Vim, Gedit, and Notepad++. Which one you use is up to you, and it's just the one that you like the best. I personally use Gedit if I'm writing a short, simple program, or, but if I'm going to write a larger program, I'm going to work inside the IDE. Students in the past have also told me many good things about Sublime, so you might want to check that out as well. The other thing you need is a compiler, which is going to translate your text instructions you wrote inside your editor into machine instructions the computer understands and is able to execute. We're going to be using the GNU C compiler, which is called GCC for short. If you don't want to install anything, you can get access to all the tools that you need for this class inside of Mimir. In order to get access to them, you're going to need to go to one of your assignments. There's always going to be an assignment called IDE Access open for you, so that you're going to be able to access the IDE even if we don't have any programming projects going on. So go ahead and click on one of your projects, and then click on Open IDE. You'll then be brought to a screen that looks like this. Up here at the top, you can see that we have an editor, which is going to allow us to write our code. We also have a file structure here on our slide, so we can create more folders and files. And then we also have the terminal down here. We're going to be able to issue commands to the computer, uh, such as compiling or running our programs. Next, we're going to talk about how to install the various tools that you're going to need if you want to do your programming at home. If you're working on a Linux system, you probably already have everything you already need. And if you're running Linux, you probably know how to get the things that you don't have. Most of them can be gotten through the package manager. The tools that you're gonna need for this class are GCC, GDB, Make, and CMake, as well as your favorite text editor to actually write your code in. And you probably already though, again, have all of these, so you should just be good to go. Next, for Mac, I don't personally have one, so I had to Google all these instructions. So hopefully they're gonna work. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is open the terminal. You can do this by going through Finder and searching for terminal. And it should be located in application slash utilities. Once you open up the terminal, type xcode select install, and you should be asked if you'd like to install the command line tools. Go ahead and say yes to this. Uh, if you get this not available, currently available error, it means you already have it, and so you're good to go. And to double check that we've actually successfully installed everything, we're gonna type gcc-v on the terminal, which should give you something like this showing up if everything was able to install. This is just a whole bunch of the default options uh, for GCC. If you don't need to understand this, don't worry about it. It should just show up. And next, and for finally for Windows, this is the most difficult to get everything installed. Uh, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to install Sigwin, which is going to give you a Linux-like experience inside of Windows. You can find it here at this website. It looks like this. Go ahead and select the installer and download it. And then after you've downloaded it, go ahead and run it. Where are you? Uh, here it is. Go ahead and say yes. Next, we want to install from the internet. Choose a location to save it, and you probably want to install for all users. Your location for the local package directory. Probably going to have a direct connection to the internet. And then you'll be given a list of MIRS sites to download. You want to select HTTP mirrors.sonic.net. This is the one that's closest to us and so will give us the fastest download. We'll hit head and hit next and you're gonna be brought to a screen that looks like this. It might have a bit more on it. 
under view, go to category, and you can see all the additional things besides the uh, default options that we would like to install. The things that we need to get in order to be able to run it on our machines are CMake, GCC Core, G++, GCC, G++, G++, GDB, and Make. And you can find all these guys under the development category. So what you would do is go ahead and click on Devel and scroll down. And eventually you're going to find the options that you need. You can see that these guys right here are loaded as skip. I've already downloaded CMake, so it says to keep. What you'd want to do is click on it so that it shows a version, and this will cause you to install it. Um, but I don't want CLIS, but you're going to do that next to CMake. And you're going to do that for all of the other guys. In these ones, make sure they're all checked that you would like to install them. And then we need to install these two options under next lit, underneath libs. So after you installed everybody under devel, probably scroll back up, minimize devel, or under libs, uh, expand it, and then go find it. If you notice, all these guys are in alphabetical order, but should help speed up your searching for it. Then after you've selected these, you're going to hit next. You're not going to see it on my screen, but a window should pop up asking if you would like to install the dependencies. You absolutely do want to install those dependencies, otherwise it's not going to work. Go ahead, hit next, hit next again. You'd also probably like to create an icon on your desktop. And then after you hit finish, you'll be done. I'm going to hit cancel because I already have everything installed. The next thing that we're going to want to download is the IDE. This IDE is going to make your programming experience in this class just so much easier. An IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, and it's a collection of commonly used tools and assistive features all put into one thing. And it's going to contain many, many different time-saving features, such as error checking, style formatting, debugging, code completion, and a whole bunch of other things that are just going to save you a lot of time. There are many different IDEs out of there, but the one that we're going to be using in this class is called C-Line. In order to get access to C-Line, you're going to want to go to jetbrains.com student and hit apply now. See there's the apply now down here. Go ahead and click that. It's going to bring you to a screen to ask you to give you some, uh, ask you to give them some information to identify you as an actual student. Go ahead and put that in and then hit apply now. Eventually you're going to be brought to a screen that looks like this. It's going to list all of the different C-Line or all the different uh, products offered by JetBrains. We want C-Line, so go ahead and click on that. Go ahead and click download. Select your correct operating system and then go ahead and download it. After it's downloaded, uh, go ahead and run the installer and you're going to be brought to a page that has a whole bunch of checkboxes to it as for file associations. Go ahead and check all of those. This will allow C-Lion to easily open those files if you happen to double click them inside of the Explorer. Then once you finally have C-Lion up and running, we're going to need to do a couple of things to put a, to set up a couple of settings inside of C-Lion. So what you're going to want to do is after you get brought to this screen, go ahead and create a new project. Go ahead and select a location for this project and first change it to C executable to C11. And then we're going to choose a location. I'm going to save mine under C Lion Projects. And I want a new folder here. We're going to call this guy Hello World. Hit OK. And then hit Create. You should get brought to a page that looks like this. What you're going to need to do once you're inside here is go to File and then go to Default Settings. And then go down to Build, Execution, and Deployment. I guess I actually wanted just normal settings. Build, Execution, and Deployment. Click on Tool Change. And then click on Sigwin Home and go ahead and find your Sigwin that you downloaded earlier. Use the bundled CMake. It should hopefully find everything that you need. You can see that it's searching right here. 
searching, 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 searching. Good, it's found all of them. You may need to click apply. And then the next thing that we're going to need to do is set up our style. So go over here to editor, click on code style, click on the drop blocks, click on C, C++, click on set from, go to predefined style, click Google, click apply, click OK. And now we want to test to see whether it works. It's still finishing building these symbols, but once it's done building the symbols, we should be able to click this play button over here. And then after we click the play button, you should see that Hello World shows up on the bottom of your screen. Uh, so here's me pressing that play button and it running. And as you can see again, Hello World shut up, just like I said. After that, we're good to go, and you should be able to do all of your programming in this class. See you next time on the next video.